So let's start uh, our uh, webinar on the last e-translation e building block. Uh, and today I would like to talk about uh, their e-translation infrastructure that the European Union are building right now. And uh, the main core uh, initiative for this was a European legislation framework because uh, there is a mandatory translation of all regulation, uh, European regulation to all languages of um, uh, member states. Uh, there were explicit need to um, build internal service also because of security reasons when you need to translate some uh, classified information to the all languages to negotiate this document within the countries but from uh, our perspective uh, when we try to build international public services or e-trade relationships there is need to translate uh, for example, public services into all, all member states' languages. Ideally, within this e-residency approach, when you try to uh, give access to your public services for all uh, citizens of, of, member, of, of all member states. And vice versa, also uh, building the internal legislation based on the European Union regulations for Moldova, Georgia and Ukraine as a country that signed uh, uh, treaty on association with the EU and also other countries <laughs> like Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus who maybe want to work with um, uh, European legislation, EADAS legislation to um, uh, take some approaches for international recognition of trust uh, services there is a lot of translations uh, within these activities and this why uh, also we need to understand that a part of legislation there is a lot of technical standards uh, who also need to be translated within this pr process uh, of validation uh, of trust services and other IT infrastructure between even our countries because uh, right now it's better for us to have English as a common language when we will negotiate some e-trade or cross-border public services initiatives. And uh, because of this, uh, self-building blocks for e-translation do not have uh, any legislation underneath. So the main idea was to bring state-of-the-art approach for the e-translation and build a machine learning uh, system that will will be capable to feed with uh, large uh, translation data and give rather good quality translation for their uh, European Union and uh, other uh, part of this module was to uh, offer multilingual sol solutions for uh, pan-European digital public services. So right now there is a European Union movement to build a pan-European core public services for any Euro European uh, citizens and uh, these services must be translated in, in, in all languages because no, not every European citizen know uh, use English and know English very well but to force to facilitate international trade and international movement of workforce, these public services must be also localized and to lower the barrier for the, the, these translation services, the e translation module was developed. So right now, uh, uh, this module already used in e-health and within e-COVID-19 uh, use case, uh, so there is already usage of this module within a specific um, uh, sphere and it's also very important that the translation module have ability to uh, build language resources uh, within the uh, sphere of usage because uh, for example word tree in information technologies <laughs> and in common language have a different meaning 
and this Y translation will have also different context within the within their their concrete text and concrete context. Also, uh, this module uh, used in e-justice, as I mentioned, so all European Union legislation and translation uh, are built using this module, and uh, this module also used in open data in e-procurement and other services within European Union. And uh, uh, main idea behind this module is that it can be integrated in uh, almost any platform with uh, API uh, application programming interface so it's not a simple Google Translate when you can copy paste text to their user interface but also machine to machine integration that uh, simplifies dramatically integration of e-translation module into different resources on different levels on city level, region level, on member state level also, they have a proof of concept integration with Drupal content management system. Maybe you know about Drupal. It's a system that simplifies building of different content websites like WordPress. And uh, the main idea and benefit for this integration that out of the box you can build English or any European or Union language Drupal website. And this uh, Drupal website will give translation into other member states' languages uh, out the box using the e-translation integration. Right now, there is a huge um, part of the module that was reused. So there is 82 different uh, uh, systems where e-translation uh, e bl uh, block already in place and uh, is used in production and also uh, 21 system uh, tried to use it or integrate this module also there is a statistic on the usage of this module so health e-health and government uh, are main usage uh, users of this module but uh, other uh, users like transport for example when you need to translate uh, some streets or <laughs> other information for the in public services uh, can be also used with it can be simplified uh, by the e-translation module and as I mentioned earlier the justice health government and even education currently are users of this module uh, also about technical part, uh, so e-translation uh, module uh, is working with main uh, text document formats as doc, open office, uh, acrobat simple text formats and web pages as html, so this, this is part of their uh, web translation uh, approach when you can generate a HTML page for the, your public services website and uh, then uh, send this HTML page to the translation block and uh, you will have the same page with the European Union uh, language when you, uh, and it works uh, uh, like Google Translate. So if maybe you try to use Google Translate to translate the whole website when you try to work with uh, non-English or <laughs> hard English uh, website. Uh, also, this uh, data can be uh, processed asynchronously because the infrastructure for the e-translate building block is not an open source infrastructure so uh, the European Union supports a cluster that make this translation uh, and it's done like uh, a dedicated cluster of this uh, software because of the complexity of this model module model and also the security reason because uh, one of the crucial parts of, of building key translation module was the security reason so when European Union would like not to share the sensitive data with third party providers like Google Translate. But uh, rather small chunks of data 
uh, returned uh, in less uh, within one minute so there is no huge um, delay between uh, sending HTML page to translation to translate and showing this translation to the end users the one hour delay is um, built to the huge document that will be more than 4000 characters and uh, e-translation web interface have a simple simple like google translate interface unfortunately you need to explicitly uh, ask uh, for their permission to use this interface and you must right now fell into groups of the users that um, eligible to use the service for free it's uh, uh, you must be a european sme or european public body to use this e-translation service and as i mentioned earlier uh, you can use api to make machine to machine integration for their uh, uh, for the trans uh, for the <laughs> translation uh, but <laughs> without uh, possibility to extend their uh, e-translation model to our languages, um, it's hard for us to use this module, and that's why I am explicitly uh, ask their support team of the e-translation module: Is it possible to uh, support uh, other languages from Eastern Partnership countries? Uh, to be available uh, for the translation and uh, their response was yes but before before this our countries needs to provide uh, uh, data sets for their original language and translate it into English or other languages so we need uh, hum human translatable text rather big sets of this data uh, that must be committed to European Language Resource Coordination Initiative and uh, after this there will be ability uh, to translate uh, into our languages uh, one exception right now we have from the Moldo for the Moldova because within the Romanian uh, translation Moldovian language already uh, it already uh, is part of the e-translation module so other languages like Belarusian and Georgian must be explicitly committed to European Language Resource Coordination Initiative and I will show you later how to do this uh, also the procedure <laughs> uh, uh, for the committing these language resources I will show it right now. Uh, before this, uh, I would like to share with you that Russian, also the part of e-translation uh, module right now, and it, it's possible to translate from European member states languages to the Russian, and that's why the, my question about third-party languages that is not uh, official languages of European member states was approved and uh, possibility to give uh, your language resources is placed in the e-translation self-building blog module when you need to register on ELS share and provide the data i already did this so i already registered as a data contributor when you can upload uh, their data to this website. One drawback right now is that there is no possibility for you to ch to select uh, Eastern Partnership languages within your profile and within your share. This why it's a further movement for us maybe as Eastern Partnership countries uh, to work with the European Commission and SEF uh, project to add our languages explicitly to the initiative and give ability for us to upload the data sets for training um, the machine learning algorithm to translate to our languages and even uh, <laughs> e-translation have support for the Russian languages there is no ability right now to upload Russian uh, translation to this uh, repository of the 
language translations. And as I mentioned, uh, uh, Moldovan language already part of the Romanian module for the e-translation block. Uh, and because uh, other Kyrillic languages uh, like Polish uh, is part of the machine, machine learning model within European uh, Union, it's rather easy for uh, us, main, main countries, to your Eastern Partnership countries, uh, to, to add uh, our translations to the European e-translation block that will dramatically simplify translation procedures within our countries. And to demonstrate this uh, approach, why I call this almost demo, uh, I would like to use Omega T uh, free translation memory tool. Uh, me, as a, a member of technical committee for information technologies, uh, I done almost 100 translation of AT standards and used this uh, uh, translation tool to dramatically simplify my process of the translation. And Omega T gives you ability to tokenize, to sort of split your document that you will translate into the blocks. And these blocks then can be translated automatically with Google Translate. And also there is a two additional uh, core features like fuzzy match. Uh, so if some block uh, uh, matches other block with some percentage of uh, uh, equality, so there is some words that are, are, are different from your main paragraph. You can automatically reuse old translation and also there is a glossary so you can build your glossary of the terms and use it to translate uh, from English to your, your language uh, the terms as you would like to do so. And uh, also uh, Omega T have integration with Google Translate API so uh, the main difference is you do not need to manually uh, copy paste your data, for example, moderator, copy paste into Google Translate, select the language that you would like to use, and then copy paste back to the uh, word and use this <laughs> integration. You can use um, direct integration with uh, Google Translate API. Uh, there is a tutorial how to do this, but it's rather simple. You need to uh, enable API and provide API key to the Omega T to be able to connect to your uh, Google Cloud account. Pricing model for uh, this translation rather good. So for one million characters it's a huge amount of, of data you will pay only twenty dollars uh, for the one million characters but when you have this uh, integration uh, the translation of the time zone is, is simple as pressing ctrl m replace with machine readable chasoe poise and then going next and a, a lot of um, uh, of data can be translated like this and, and then make minor changes uh, to their uh, machine readable uh, machine translation of your data. And here we also can see the fuzzy match. So this text presentation of e-residency self-building block uh, is almost identical to the text of six webinar on e-residency self-building block. And this is why Omega T provide you ability to replace the current translation with existing translation, and you can also use this uh, fuzzy match and replace with it to continue your translation uh, module. Unfortunately, right now, e-translation from the European Union do not have integration yet with Omega T tooling. Uh, but uh, I think they are working right now on this integration. So it was the main part of their webinar. Thank you for your attention, colleagues. Maybe.